Hey everyone, welcome to another Serpents 3 introductory video where we talk about nodes and I've got some forum questions that I'm going to be answering today. And we have a forum member who's asking about how to select and active, how to activate a collection in the outliner and also just how to select an object. So some basic questions and we're gonna be using the Blend Data Browser today. I'll cover a couple small things as well if uh, you're used to Python coding. You can enter Python script um, to do some of this as well. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So to start things off, all I'm doing is I've created two button nodes and I've got them on a panel. So here's my panel on my 3D viewport. I've named it select and then on the label up here it's select stuff. And then I just added a button node. You select the node graph that you're working with and then have to make an operator set this to custom and you can select your serpents operators so i've got the select collection operator that i've created and i just pull it from the list so that's for my selecting a collection and then i made an operator for selecting cube that's down below once you've created the operators they can be blank just go ahead and build up your buttons you can make some icons so just come in here and select an icon for your collection and select an icon for for your object and then you're going to want to give them a label so i usually just copy the the button's name for the operator into the label and once you've got those buttons you can start populating your operator with code and you can begin executing the code um, so for selecting a, a collection the outliner is kind of an interesting addition to blender uh, when they added it in 2.8 a lot of the code here doesn't really match a lot of the code in other parts of Blender. So when you, when you select a collection and it highlights around the collection icon, it's, it's technically called the active layer collection. And as you change view layers, you can have a different active layer collection. So when you're setting up a new active layer collection, we're going to go to the Blender data browser uh, that's built in with Serpens. And you can just right click on one of these little icons on the right to turn collections on or off. Just right click and copy context. And that will set the blend data browser context um, to the outliner. And then you can come down to the view layer. And I'm going to bring this over just a little bit. And we have active view layer collection. And that's, that's the property that we want to be setting. So you can copy that data path. And then you can shift V, bring that in. So that's going to be the property that we're going to be setting. Um, and you're going to add in a set property node as well. So I've got my active layer collection that I brought in. I've already got one, so I'm going to delete it. And then we've got the set property node. So you just go to the add menu here and under properties, so shift A, properties, and set property. You bring that in and you're gonna wanna change the value. So what kind of data are we trying to set? So the active layer collection, the property that you're setting is actually called a layer collection property. It's a very, very unique Blender property. But you're, it's a property type. So you just make sure you select property from your list. So the blend data that we set, is the active layer collection and then the value is who is going to be set so wh which collection do i want to set as the active collection and before i ever try to set a collection i always like to check does that collection exist in the first place so um we'll go back to our blend data browser we'll, we'll get to that we got to find out the who so we've got we've got the what are we setting now we need to say who are we setting so under the layer collection, so view layer, and then we have, um, in our view layer, we have layer collection. And inside of layer collection, there is a children. And the children is a group of items. And this collection is a little bit different than what we're used to seeing up here with collections. This collection is just a group of items in Blender. And so there, there are multiple children that live in the main view layer collection. And they, they are these two children right here starting out. And then if you, these collections have children, 
then you can open them up in the Blend Data Browser and you'll see that those children are, are there as well. So to keep things simple, just for this video, we're going to be selecting just the first set of children. So you would click on the copy icon and then you would just paste that in. And since this is a, a group of items, we've got 3D models and utility, we have to pick which one we want to be the one that gets made the active collection. So there's a cool node in Serpens called the index collection property. And it just basically says, I want to pick one of them. And you can set it by index. So item zero or item one, or you can do item negative one if you're trying to go backwards or you can set them by name. So I've got utility here, so I can literally copy that name and paste it in here. And all these other nodes, don't worry about those. Um, that's for a little bit later. So we really only have just a few nodes that we've made. So we index to get our utility, and then I like to just check to see if it exists first. Yeah, go ahead. Um, we actually have our user on the form. I'm gonna have him ask a question. Go ahead and ask. Yeah, so the, the question is, um, yeah, so that so the, when you type it in, um, so index and name, these are both technically indexing the collection. We're just indexing by string, so, or, or by, or by, yeah, so this is an integer and this is a string. And they're both considered they're both considered index, so that property doesn't change. We're just indexing based on string or based on uh, just number. And you can you could feed in like if you had an integer, you could feed that integer in as well. So something else in Blender you could feed in as the number. That's right. Yep. So I could I could feed in a string here, and you can. You can feed in um, a named collection. So there is a, uh, let's go to the add menu. And under blend data, there is a collections node. And you can, you can set a named collection here. So it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, oh, you know what, I'm sorry. You can't use this node because this is this is sending out blend data instead of a string. But you could you could come and get a collection by name. Um, so every child collection has a name property in the blend data browser. And so I could come in here and I could feed a named collection if I wanted. You can feed it from all kinds of places. So as long as you have a string and it tends to be the name of the collection, it'll work. Yeah, so indexes, um, if it's green, it's gonna be expecting an integer whole number. And if it's blue, it'll be expecting a string. And it, it will index by either one, and that's fine. Um, that's, that's just a Python property. Python can index by number or by name. It can also index, or index by variables as well. So you can assign variables and index them. You wouldn't be using this node for that, but you could totally do that. So in this case, we've got our child, uh, are our children group, and we're indexing just one item in that group. And then I like to um, just come in and do an if else, and you can plug the item directly into the condition. So that's basically checking, does this item even exist? Because you may set it in your code one time, um, and then the user may delete that collection. And if you try to set that collection and it's not there, you're gonna error Blender out. So always check to see if it's there first. And then you just plug in the true if it is there. We're going to set the property on that. So we only have, um, if we look here, we only have four nodes to do this for a basic use case. And if I want to test it out, I can go select a different collection, make sure the little thing is highlighted around it, and I can click my little button and it will select utility. Now, if I wanted to go deeper, let's say I wanted to select one lights. So if I were to type that in here, I tried doing it, 
you're going to get an error because the layer collection only has two children. Um, they're 3D models and utility. Utility has more children. Yeah, so all you have to do is, is I could pull in utility. And I could drop this directly into um, the children on utility. So I would just copy this node and paste it in. And then I would do the same thing. I would index the, that children based upon lights. And I would check to see if that one existed as well. So I could, I could bring my if, another if node in, throw the property into that point, and I could put the, that onto the value. And now when I select collection, it will select the next child in. And if you want to get more advanced with this, you can build a recursive function that basically goes deeper and deeper and returns the one that you want as the value. Um, that's a little more advanced use case, and I'm not going to cover that in today's video, but this is how you would do it manually. So that, that would be for selecting a collection. There's also the ability, there's a git property script line, and um, there's, there's Python forums out online that basically tell you how to do this. And they're basically telling you you're trying to index the view layer children, and we're trying to just return some, some child in there. And so we're just going out to BPI data collections and getting the utility collections name. Yep, and it will, it, will, it will return that utility collection. And this same, this same property, I could come in here, we'll delete this if else node, and throw this property into here, and I select that, and it would do the exact same thing. And you can get a get data script line as well, it's another node, and you can actually type everything out if you'd like. So BPI context view layer dot layer collection dot children, and then which child do you want to use? And you just set, make sure you set your data type to be a property. And uh, when you set it to property, Serpens will give you just a notification, hey, there's a get property script line that's for transformable properties. So it, it recommends if you're trying to do those um, to use this node. But this will work exactly the same. So I could plug this one in to the condition and this one into the value. And when I click the button, it's going to do the same thing. So there's there's a lot of um, a, a lot of ways to tackle doing something with nodes. The easiest one, in my opinion, is just grabbing an index collection property node because you don't have to write any scripts. You just type it by name and you're good to go. Yeah, and you you can you can run in variables and do the same thing. Yep. So we, we've done this for collections now. Now, if you wanted to get even more, um, you wanted to keep it Pythonic and all the stuff is in Python, but you still want the ability to set the value in the middle, there is a combined strings node. So you would just get the get data script line and you'd plug um, some kind of string into that line and there's a combined strings. You can break this long line up into three parts. So the first part, ending with the get apostrophe, and then you can plug in another string that just changed that by name, or another node that feeds that name in, and then end it with name. And this, this would do the exact same thing. Yeah, the big key is the single quotations because we're referencing it by name. That's correct. Yeah. Or you could even, um, this is a point where you could bring in a property, like you could feed a property in, into this point as well. So the question is for those on YouTube who can't hear, um, are, is there a formatting strings node? Um, there is not, but you can do, you can do a, a get, you well technically the dit, get data script line node should be able to do that. You just type in something for a string and do the format, and you can output the string again as the new formatted string. Um, because this is just an execution execution nodes, and um, just to get a little bit more detailed on the Serpent's end panel, if your node trees properties and settings, there's a debug sockets. And for those of you who really like Python and understand it pretty well, you can turn on debug sockets and you can open up each one of these nodes and it will tell you 
will tell you the Python that's been generated for that socket when it outputs data. So we're using the eval function to do all this. So you could technically do some sort of Python function and have the eval do it. You're just typing it out in string form, and then it will evaluate that string, and you can return a string from there. So lots, lots of ways to skin a cat in Serpens, um, just like there is in Python. So that, that's all covering the setting your active collection. Now for setting objects, um, you can kind of do the same thing going through this process. I'm just going to keep it simple. So for the, for the select cube, I'm just going to do the same process. I want to check to see if the item exists and there is an objects node that Serpens comes with by default. So if you go to the shift A and under blend data, there is an objects node. And this little, th yeah. So, so the, to get the object, we'll just, we'll just do it based on name for a simple use case example. And that's gonna return an indexed object. I could also return the active object if I wanted. Um, or you could loop through a bunch of objects and do them one by one. Uh, we're just going to cover one object today to keep things simple. And so we want to check if that object exists before we start. And then on the Blend Data Browser, so I'm going to open back up over here. In this case, um, because we're doing a specific object, we don't want to be working in the context section. We actually want to go to the, the data section. And I just want to go find objects. And you can use the filter to filter out and just show objects. And then I just open up any one. It doesn't matter which one. I like to start with cube. And then cube has a whole bunch of stuff in it. And so you can just, like the list is forever long, but there are functions towards the bottom. And one of the functions is a select get and a select set. So if you wanted to see if the object was selected, you would use select get. If you want to actually make the object selected or not, you would use select set. And you can click on the copy button and then shift V to bring it in. Um, and when you bring it in for the first time, it's going to have the, the input objects based on a string. So you, you could totally just type in the name and uh, just go that route. But you could also change this to be either uh, like an index, or an integer style index or you can have it be based on a property. And so you could feed that property directly in. And that's all I've really done for my objects for select set. The one caveat with this is you have a couple of um, function parameters that you have to turn on. Um, the view layer is not needed in this case for this function. In Python, if you were to code this, you wouldn't have to type anything in for view layer because it'll default to the active view layer. But the state you have to select. So if this is turned off, you have to turn it on and you have to tell Blender, do you want it to be s selected or not selected? So currently I've just got this cube and I want the state to be selected. And as long as the cube exists, when I click the object or click on my, my button here, it will select the object. That's, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you guys on YouTube enjoyed this and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.